Okay, everyone, so this is something different, okay? So usually my, uh, my content is just me chatting kind of rubbish and uh, maybe informative rubbish at that. And there's been a lot of you who have actually reached out and asked various different questions, mainly about compounds and living, but also about, you know, being here with your partner, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. And some of the questions I can't answer is, uh, or are more around the, the legalities. And that is why I'm excited today to bring in someone who is, I mean, an expert about it, right? Hopefully, so do you, wanna, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you so much for uh, having me and part of this. And your videos are amazing, by the way. Super informative, so thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, yeah, my name is Ibai, I'm a legal consultant here. Uh, and I've been doing this for around 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the employment affairs, uh, labor law, the establishing companies, uh, more into that because I'm getting my um, uh, expertise in such thing and uh, yeah, I'm, I get a lot of questions regarding the employment that it is an interesting part. I've been doing this for a long time now. It's uh... Yeah, because I mean, for clarity, um, Iba has a show on SRFM. And I actually turned or got into my car, the radio came on and it was him talking about, you know, things expats need to look out for when it comes to employment, contracts and all that kind of stuff. So what I did is I messaged him. I was like, Iba, <laughs> you're amazing. Let's get a uh, let's get a, sh a show in. Well, not a show, but a, um, a video in. And I guess for me, like this comes from a bit of a personal um, area mm -hmm. as well, because, you know, when I first came here, there were lots of horror stories about people not being allowed to transfer their their sort of uh, their sponsorship, their e-karma, who were being booted out of the country and all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. What was true and what wasn't, I don't know, but it kind of put something in the back of my head that mm -hmm. was, okay, I'm never going to be able to leave the job that I'm at. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if I want to stay in Saudi, then I'm just going to have to stay here. Mm -hmm. And so it actually caused me quite a lot of anxiety at the time. I remember I went to see a lawyer myself to understand what this sort of procedure is and, and my contract and everything there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I stayed at the company for three years and then I kind of bit the bullet and just saw if I, I could transfer and they were very good about that and I managed to transfer my sponsorship. So now mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working somewhere else. What I'm trying to say is there's lots of confusion, lots of kind of gray areas. And especially if you look online, mm -hmm. there's absolutely zero mm -hmm. information. Yeah. So I think you know, what is great to have you on today is just to give that authority, that know-how. And also, if anyone wants to message Iba, DM him, whatever, I'll put his Instagram handle in there, assuming that's okay. Yeah, that's totally okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. No actually. problem, yeah. no problem. So I guess, yeah, like over the last how have, like three years, four years, what would you say have been the biggest changes for in, in relation to employment and expats? Yeah, let me tell you that it's uh, we can see so many good changes in terms of that kind of freedom that the employee is having. Mm. Well, it started where the uh, the new regulations were all about uh, tapping into a service transfer rather than a sponsorship transfer. Okay, mm. so the, tra the the sponsorship is uh, the system we all know it. It used to allow some people to abuse the whole thing by yeah. having them by having them getting paid because of that and controlling the expats when it was changed that now the, uh, the your contract with the company is your is your sponsorship so now it's all about transferring the services okay and now having that discretion or the sole let's say uh, um, acceptance of the current employer was a really really it, it made things go messy and it was conflicting with the freedom of the employee himself mm. Now, if you're um, looking at your contract and you're really doing well in terms of being aligned with the with the contract itself, it's a click of a mouse mm. from the from the uh, empl from the uh, f further empl the employer that you need to transfer to. Just they request it on the platform, and your uh, current employer has to accept it. And there are some points that they don't even have to accept it if you're having any kind of conflict with them. Yes, like your e has expired or something exactly. like that. Exactly, they're not renewing it. Uh, they they were they are away from work. Mm. They're they're maybe the employers, God forbid, dead or just uh, missing. Mm. Uh, some of them is concealment. 
in, in, uh, about you, you can be part of the concealment. Yes. So if the employer is doing concealment and you're not part of it, you can totally, these are only examples mm. where you are transferred automatically to your uh, new um, employer. And the good thing is, uh, it was uh, one condition was to spend a year with your current employer before being yeah. able to transfer. Like you had your year contract, yeah. you had to finish that before you could yeah. even think about leaving. But that's not the case not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. You don't even have to spend a year. However, you have to check that all the contractual obligations with your contract. Now, we know that the contracts are digital. So even if we're writing a contract, this is not the official one. The official one is what you receive as a link on the platform. And the literally... keyword is Q-I-W-A, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So you receive, uh, you receive actually uh, an SMS and then there's a link where you have your uh, username, password, it's uh, linked with your app share. Mm -hmm. And then you have to provide a code that you receive as an acceptance. But please, you have to read that contract. But this, so it, you, at this point, you need your e mm -hmm. right, to get into the app share mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. What about those people who are pre-signing off on their job, mm -hmm. on, their, on their contract, on their offer? Mm -hmm. So they don't have access to that platform and they've just been sent a PDF or whatever it might mm -hmm. be. Would that change there? Well, if it's an offer, the offer is still something that is not really related to what, what the procedure that we said. It's still something that is like, uh, I call it as an MOU, like a memorandum of understanding. It's still uh, enforcing, but it's not official to the government here. Okay. All right. So the offer is just the kind of request from the employer for you and giving you an idea of what the salary is going to be and what are the terms and conditions. But signing the offer does not mean that you're working there and does not mean that your transfer, your sponsorship is transferred. Fine. So it would be offer letter, a contract, sign that. Um, it's a kind of memorandum of, of understanding. Then you move to Saudi. Mm -hmm. You get your e karma. And then you, you kind of have the contract, which is legally binding in the sort of government document in a way that is on the keyword platform that you would then sign. Mm -hmm. And ideally, these two contracts match. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they should. They should. They should. They Assuming should. you've assigned this one, they're not going to necessarily slip mm -hmm. in something here. Mm -hmm. So just because you've signed this, I guess it's important to make sure you do the due diligence and... Absolutely, cross, cross absolutely. Check. So if it's a, a, such a professional company, they will do this. And this is something we did in, in, uh, in the company I work for. We did a different kind of contract, uh, employment contract for abroad people. So it was the, the reason why we're doing this contract is to get people in, mm. all right? It is uh, similar to what you can check by uh, when you can receive from Qiwa. It just been meant for people abroad to get them in because you can't do a contract on Kiwa if people are not in Saudi Arabia. Yes. And this is where it's very important for everyone to know that if they came in a visit visa or tourist visa, it cannot be uh, changed into, uh, you know, an ID. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So a visit visa is a visit visa. Yes. If someone is telling you, if someone, even even a business visa. Business uh, well, business visa is uh, is is different. Well, well, tourism and visit visa cannot be transferred into. They cannot visit. be transferred, and you're not allowed to work. You're not allowed to work, and at one point, no one, because it's it is happening. It is easier now to issue visit visa and tourism visa, right? It's easier because we don't want everyone to come to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So people are abusing this, saying that, hey, listen, I'm going to send you a visit visa and I'm going to get getting you in Saudi Arabia. Once you, you're here, we are going to do, we are going to change it into an ID. This cannot be happen. Yes. It can't happen in no way. It is mentioned by uh, Saudi directorate, a, a passport directorate, Jawazat, in what we call it in Arabic, that it can't be. People have to go back to their country and then get into another visa, which might be a business visa, it might be uh, requesting them to come and work for another one. So but telling anyone to come with a visit visa and then we will do this Qiwa thing yeah. can happen. So I guess the only reason that someone should be coming to Saudi with a tourist visa or a visit visa kind of shared the link by the company that they may work for is just to explore Exactly, city. exactly. See if see if it if it's right for you. But there's no way. No way. They should be the employer should be for, like making that person work or just saying, oh, just do do a day here or do a day there. Not a, no, not at all. It's, it's uh, something that is against law. I mean, uh, at one point they are breaching the law and they are going to pay fines for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a visit visa, you can't work. The only thing is that you can you know do this kind of uh, the initial kind of agreement. 
and then the, uh, the expats need to return back yes. to their country and then to, uh, you know, travel formally to Saudi Arabia as, as uh, you know, uh, employees, as mm. staff, as uh, domestic workers. It does not really matter, yeah. but it should be going through the, uh, the official channels. Yes. There are something that we can do, which is uh, transferring someone who's on a visit visa into being an, an employee to work in Saudi Arabia. Okay. So do not get fooled by all these <laughs> offers because it's happening. Oh, I know, yeah. I know. It's, I, I know quite a few people. Yeah, and people are, ca are caught in between. So they're there, they don't They don't have an income. No one is uh, actually uh, uh, approving them to work. No one mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. accepting them and they can't return back at one point because maybe they they can't afford it. So it's... Uh... Yeah, and so I guess that's that's a good thing is is if you are coming over on a, a business visa or a visit visa and you are working, which you shouldn't be, mm -hmm. um, you will be paid cash, uh, which then you can't really do anything with. Mm -hmm. You can't put it into a bank account because mm -hmm. you can't get you a can't, bank account. You can't, yeah. Um, you can, yes, take it to the money exchange, but then when you're leaving the country, you can only take a certain amount with you. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 60,000 riyals. 60,000 riyals or so, equivalent. So if, you, if, you're, if you're working here for months under a, a tourist visa, um, then you're kind of you're screwed and the employer's paying you so that's all fine although it's not fine um but but ultimately what's going to happen when you need to leave is you might not be able to get all your money out there might be issues and and so on well absolutely so what i uh, urge everyone to do is to have a talk with their employer to to check what is the reason why because at some uh, one point i understand if the company is not aligned with Nitaqat uh, system, which is having the Saudization in place and having the equated uh, number of Saudis in the company, they can't issue visas. Mm -hmm. They have to be compliant with the with the Saudization so they can issue visas, right? Yes. So that's why at one point they tell. So they need to know the reason why. Is there a, a good reason why they're still on a visit visa or tourism visa? Yes. All right? And, and they need to uh, have... Um, a time frame and what, what would result. be a good reason because we spoke about visiting and just seeing what it's like mm -hmm. that's is that the only reason well uh tourism visa uh, tourism visiting the kind of religious uh visiting for mm -hmm. for uh, for this or maybe at one point uh the maybe you're having some meetings and uh, because it's part of your work outside of saudi arabia so you're having an important meeting in saudi arabia so you can issue a visa to go and attend that meeting, conference, yes. any kind of, you know, uh, any kind of something related to business, but not really working from there. Yes, so yes, it yes. might be a reason why. But at one point, in order to, you know, to get that, uh, to get that life that you you, you came for, you, all the things that they have to be, you know, complied with the regulations and mm, terms mm. in Saudi Arabia. And I think an important thing you touched on there was Saudiization. Mm -hmm. Do you want to explain a bit about that? Well, Saudiization, it has so many like colors, okay? Uh, the more that you're, you're having what is requested for you to have Saudis, so there are uh, kind of positions that has to be Saudis. Uh, it's a long list, but some of them like the HR. And that list is growing, isn't it? It is growing. It is growing. There's Saudization. The Saudization in so many positions is happening, and I guess it is for the best of the country. I mean, it is. Uh, it has to be a priority to get the national people to work, right? Mm, mm, mm. And it is. Uh, I would be glad if it was happening in my country. It is something that's really good, supporting the Saudis yes. in the best way. I mean, uh, in, in a really controlled way. And it, it's always being phases, it's on, on phases, mm. like the legal. It started by not having any kind of Saudization, but then it went into 50%. So if, um, if there's a legal advisor, uh, it should be like one legal advisor, one Saudi person, because it's 50%, then it went to 70 So if we're having like uh, 10, okay. seven of them should be Saudi and three should be I like see. expats. If we're having us, like one example would be the legal advisor or lawyer, it should be like this. So it's coming into phases, and the more company is complied with the nitaqat, having Saudis in place, because there's a grace period, and you don't have to be like aligned 100%, but you have to work on it. The more they have more features, like having more visas to bring people from yeah, outside. Yeah, right, because if you have a certain number of Saudis, that can get you a certain number of expat Expats, visas. Expats, yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if you're not, then your, uh, your system in the... 
uh, Ministry of Human Resources and Social Development might be having like a red flag. So you can't do so so many good procedures. So like renewing and recruiting would be, uh, you know, so that's why that why is why you might be bringing uh, someone in on a visa visa to work. Exactly, which, which is yeah. un, very yeah. underhand shouldn't happen shouldn't happen so yeah. i think it's important if if that is the case then you understand why that is the case and really drill down into like the reasons why because there isn't really a good reason right or you could just hit Iba up and ask him <laughs> about your situation well well you did something uh, while you uh, when you started this uh when you mentioned that you actually consulted a lawyer you mm. did amazing by the way this is something that we tend to do the diy thing uh do it yourself mm. it's great I mean, uh, the law is made for everyone to read, but it's just been used by lawyers. I totally understand. Mm. But I mean, approaching a lawyer is something that would really, really help you and it will support you and to avoid you going and uh, taking wrong decisions. Yes. So you did great by consulting someone. And now we're tapping into having like, these specialized lawyers. So in the, in the past, like a lawyer would do literally everything here in Saudi Arabia. Now it has changed. Okay. So, and I encourage everyone, if you're approaching a lawyer to, to solve whatever or for consultancy, ask them, have they done this before? Mm. They would know about it. I mean, knowing about it is different than being an expert in it. Because especially now things have changed or are changing. Exactly. If you're not on the sort of on the pulse of what is happening, mm -hmm. then you know you might not be privy to mm -hmm. the new information, and exactly. then you might not be able to offer your client or the expat and what, the, the, the yeah. well, the truth, yeah, like yeah. what the current yeah. the state of things. Yeah. yeah, even the labor law it's been changing like yes. constantly. Every couple of months there's a change, so we have to be on the top of our game. If someone is Super busy by establishing companies, amazing. But mm. then you come to them with labor law, they would think, oh, labor law, I know about it. But there's some changes <laughs> yes. that will be really critical in your case. Yes, yes, so yes. So always, always reach out to someone who has been, who is, is actively doing it, not knowing about it. Mm. Because as a lawyer, it's very easy for me to do my research and check for the, for maybe the terms and conditions, regulations, anything. But working on it will will save you some time, will save you money. Yes. So this is what I encourage everyone. And uh, where do you think would be the best place to find someone who specializes in that? Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Yeah. In respect to, to well, first of all, how I got the name of that lawyer. Mm -hmm. And that was through uh, an individual who... Um, his e karma expired with his with his sponsor, and so he transferred to to another sponsor who basically then they created a business that was in the same industry as mm -hmm. what he had before. Mm -hmm. The first guys took him to court and tried to sue and appeal and everything and so with this lawyer, he managed to um, get out of that basically mm -hmm. and uh -huh. and the okay. court sided with him so on that note. The changes that you have mentioned, they are very much um, sort of uh, not necessarily on the side of expats, but it's not so strictly on the side of, of Saudis. It's, it's fair. It's, it's fair, exactly. Fair. It's in the middle. It's fair. As long as you know your rights, you know res your responsibilities, you're reading your contract and you're aware at least of the labor law mm. and you, you're not blindly just taking decisions, you know what are the requirements for the visa and you're trying always to be aligned with law, you will do great. Yes. You'll do, believe me, you'll do great because it's made for people who are really having the intention to work hard, to work with an official entity, and it's made for employers mm. to be aligned to to have enough Saudis as stipulated in laws, and at the, at the same point, have expats if if they were allowed. Yeah. Okay. So, next thing I want to touch on is the individual, the expat has has got their offer letter or their contract or their review and their contract when in the kingdom. What are some of the things that they should be looking for? Okay, perfect. It's a, this is a great, great question. Uh, to start with, we need to know that the offer letter is a letter. It's not a contract. It's just uh, getting us prepared to the contract. But when it comes to the contract, uh, we also know that it's now it's a unified kind of form that is uh, given to you via a link on Qiwa platform. So if there's any kind of uh, contradiction between both the written one and the digital, the digital will prevail. Okay. So we need to know this. The one on the keyword platform will Exactly. Okay. This is the, the, the one that will be used in case we're having a dispute. So Fine. even if you're signing the contract, you have to read both. And you need to find any kind of you know, change and in, in different, different, differences between both. 
Now, as we know that it is a unified kind of form, we would say, oh, it's generated from a computer. So it, it can be happening anything that's against me. Yes. However, we still need to check anything that might at one point uh, get you in trouble. Like one of them is the probation period. Mm. We all know that probation period is three months, but it might be up to six months. It might be up to 180 days. Okay. So knowing that, I know that uh, within uh, uh, 180 days, I might be at one point dismissed without any compensation. We need to know. However, it should be stipulated in written in the contract that the probation period might, be, might extend into 180 days, which is six months. Mm. And it can be, it, you can get another probation period, by the way. You can't. You they can't, can't extend. You can't extend one that more than 180 unless okay. you left the work for around six months and then you return back to the same position, it can be. Another one is transferring you into a way different job. Okay, fine. Like maybe you're, uh, someone is uh, like a receptionist, but because of their, uh, they're having a really good certificate or maybe they graduated um, um, from law school. Mm -hmm. So they became mm -hmm. the, uh, the legal advisor. It, they can be put into another a probation period got you yeah right okay so we need to really check the probation period and by the way sometimes some companies will put uh, a kind of uh, penalty clause a, a penalty on uh, if you are leaving but this penalty won't be enforced on the employer himself and this is usually common in teachers con uh, kind of uh, okay, contracts okay. because if teachers are leaving the middle of the semester that might harm the, the yes the yes yes so they might say that if you're leaving yeah we might ask you to compensate us with, with two salaries uh, I see. But if we're dismissing you, we're not going to compensate you. Yes. It might be there. So we need to be aware of it. Uh, the last thing I want to say about this is uh, we, uh, if the company is paying any kind of money because of the medical check or transferring the, the comma, they might ask the employer to compensate them if the employer is leaving within the probation period. I see. But that has to be stipulated in the contract? It, it should be as well. It should be as well. Yeah. And then, so a question on the probation. If your probation is three months mm -hmm. and you get to the end of the three months and they say they want to extend it, mm -hmm. is that possible? It is. If it was mentioned in the contract... That we that, can, we, we have the... Yeah. Okay. If it's only stipulated in the contract that, that it's, it's three only months. three months, they can't. Okay. Yeah, they can't. No way they can. All right? Okay. So this is... I've heard that happen. <laughs> Didn't read the contract, did they? <laughs> well, yeah, reading the contract, we look at it as something that is for granted, you know. We we barely read. I mean, it might be a little bit of, of uh, you know, it's not that much appealing kind of reading. Yes. But we read you know, policy, the insurance policy, any kind of loan, employment contract, uh, any kind of, you know, uh, joint venture company that yes, you're part yes, of. Yes. You have to read. The AOA, Article of Association. Because one of the other things you mentioned was the um, the non-compete. Mm -hmm. So again, like that was one of the big things that struck me mm -hmm. when I was looking to move was, mm -hmm. am I going to be able to? Like, are, is it going to be allowed? So, so, and I think at the time, initially we had a two-year non-compete, mm -hmm. and then with a batch of new contracts, it came down to six months because everyone kicked off being like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. So, so talk, agree talk a bit. So uh, the non-compete is mentioned by Article 83, Labor Law. Uh, it is mentioned clearly that the employer can ask you not to compete with him or not, not to disclose any kind of uh, confidential information. As long as it's mentioned clearly what type of job and the geographical place and the time frame. Mm -hmm. These three elements should be mentioned in such thing in order to be enforceable. Usually it is mentioned in the employment contract. Yeah. If not, it means that there's no, you know, you're not obliged to do so. So what would happen if it's not mentioned in the, in the employment contract? When, once you're resigning, not renewing, terminating, whatever, uh, it was the reason why you're not working there anymore, the employer tend to give you that letter of the non-compete and the confidentiality. If you signed on it, it is enforceable. I see. So it's okay to be outside of the contract. It doesn't mean that it has to be in the contract. Most probably it is. And uh, in my company, I uh, really encourage them to have it in the contract yeah. in order to keep everything in, you know, in control. However, it is okay to uh, get it in a, in a separate letter. All right. And at one point, if you're asking your uh, upcoming company, I don't know if you're going to another company, they will uh, have a qiwa request for your current company to, uh, you know, to say, 
to say yes and to transfer you. If you signed already that kind of letter or mm. or, or the contract, the employer is, is allowed not to accept your transferring you I to see. another competitor. So basically, to give you context, is there's this platform called Kiwa. That is where all the, the contracts and, and sponsorships are held, really. And if you want to transfer your sponsorship or transfer your service to another sponsor, mm -hmm. um, the, the new people have to request uh, a transfer from your previous or your current employer. The current employer can basically just say yes or no. So it's literally that simple and that easy but obviously things like this mm -hmm. can make it a bit more <laughs> a little bit more complicated yeah if you're uh, you accepted not to work with a competitor and i get it some people would say like uh if there uh, there are the the financial people mm -hmm. i can just not work at a company where with my expertise because this is what i've been doing yeah like a, f a financial person who's been working with construction this is what he does he can't do anything they else can't make or a, a living teacher. another way yeah or a yeah. teacher Right or a trainer. Mm, mm. I mean, this is his career. Yeah, they can just change it. But I mean, at one point that the employer is looking at it is that these people have the know-how, and maybe we're not terminating on a good terms. Mm. So at one point maybe they they might harm me, and if they are uh, escalating it to the court when it comes to confidentiality, they have to provide evidence that the employer did harm them by disclosing some of the confidential information which uh, which led to damaging the previous employer so it's not that much opened they have to provide some evidence i see but okay. at one point yeah they don't compete oh and by the way some people use a bridge you know what a bridge is the bridge is uh getting a random employer to a uh, transfer piwa on him for a bit of time and then you transfer to the competitor Ah, so is that you, allowed? Well, it uh, well, it's not against the law, but going to the uh, to a competitor is against the law. Yes, but it's not going to be. You're not going to be penalized until the previous uh, employer sued you. And by the way, they can sue you only within one year of the day they know about that breach. I see. So if you breach for a year and they did and they know about it, maybe how how they can know? Maybe they texted you say, how could you go to X uh, company? So it means that they know and you have the evidence. One year passed, they did not uh, sue you. They lose their uh, ah, chance to do so. Okay. Right? So okay. Mm -hmm. it is against the law, but you won't be penalized unless you know, they sued you. Got you. Got you. Right. So now if we're thinking our expat is in the country, they're working, everything's good. What do they need to be careful of mm -hmm. in terms of, for example, like we were saying, earning money through another channel. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah. So something about uh, expats is they have to earn money only from their employers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, they because now it's all uh, being, you know, monitored within the, uh, according to the central bank. So the money coming to your account should be only and strictly only from your employer. So the company you're working with and the Qiwa platform contract saying, uh, 20,000 reals. Mm. This is the money that you have to receive as a salary on your bank account on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unless you're, you know, lending me people money and they're getting back to you or maybe you got, you got a little bit amount of cash to people uh, and then they're getting yes, it. Yes, but yes. it's okay if it's not significant amount yeah. and it's not on monthly basis. Yes, yes, okay? yes. And people are really talented. They tend to open their own, you know, bakery shop online. Mm. Okay, or do that kind of online coaching, online training. In principle, it's a good idea. However, if they're earning money for their own account, this is against the law. Yeah. The fine might reach up to 50,000 riyals and deportation might happen. Ooh. That's like 10,000 pounds. Yeah. So, so that is, if you are, if you've got your job, you've got your contract, you're earning money through there, say 10,000 riyals, and then each month, and then you're doing some other side hustle, and then you're getting money either sent into that bank account, um, whether you're giving cash or whether it's a transfer from mm -hmm. that, from another individual or another company, then sooner or later, if it's substantial amounts, and that obviously varies, you, you'll be flagged by the bank. You'll be flagged because you're getting that money. And maybe a question might be raised is, what if I'm getting the money cash? 
If you're getting the money cash, it means that it's uh, unlikely for you to get flagged, but that doesn't mean that you're doing illegal stuff. Yes, yes, yes. That doesn't mean that it's legal to work, but not by transfer. <laughs> the fact that you're working for your own uh, account, own personal gain, own, own personal yeah. gain is not something that uh, you can do. At one point, maybe, and just maybe, you can change the the way you're working and do that passion that you have, mm -hmm. and combine it with the work, and maybe having a partner as a Saudi partner and maybe establish a foreign investment company. Yeah. Because this is allowed. You, are, you as an expat, you can be a part of a company here mm -hmm. in Saudi Arabia. If it was a 100% Saudi company, that's called concealment. Yes. <laughs> if it was a foreign investment, that's, that's something uh, yes. that is legal. So who knows? We might be doing another video at some point where, you know, we're talking about the freelance visa or something. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, well, maybe. Who, you who, never know. Who knows? You who never knows? know. You never know. Um, so that's great. Anything else that someone shouldn't do or be aware of when they are well, living their life here? Well, yeah. Uh, the, it's been mentioned uh, several times by the Saudi Directorate of Passport that the employer uh, should uh, get the employee to work uh, in the same uh, position or uh, nature of, of work, same as stipulated in the contract or, or iqama. Mm -hmm. If they're not doing so and they're allowing the employee to work for someone else, the employer will be uh, fined for up to 100,000 riyals and maybe to be banned from recruitment up to five years. Okay. And if it's someone who is not Saudi and is maybe the general manager, he might be get deported. Okay. All right. So uh, as an example, maybe someone is having an employee uh, who's doing, maybe he's doing the uh, kind of financial, he's a financial person doing the finance. Okay. He's the accountant of the company. At the same time, he's uh, running some errands for the company. He's doing, uh, he's buying some stuff and doing some procurement. Mm. Okay, uh, he's not allowed to do so. Or maybe he's having a chef uh, at one point. At the same time, is that he's letting them do some uh, driving uh, chores. I see. Right. So, if he's a chef, he's a chef. He's accountant. He should be, you know, strict to be an accountant, or else the employer will bear some uh, serious consequences. Mm. Because I've uh, sort of know of people who have come in under one job but are doing mm -hmm. something totally different. Mm -hmm. This is not allowed. That's the not employer allowed. Yeah. will bear the uh, consequences yes. actually. Yes. And uh, it can be reported. Mm. And at, at one point, I encourage everyone to gain knowledge, okay, to read their contracts, to read the... Uh, the um, uh, of course the terms and conditions that anywhere according yeah. to their contract to read the labor law and to go to the human resource and social development website they have an amazing infographic and not only there but on their twitter okay and jawazata twitter as well they stipulate a lot of things they okay. mention a lot of good I'll things i'll put the uh, the link to that in the video yeah 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 that would be great that would be good jawazat uh, and uh, the uh, human resource and social development mm -hmm, mm -hmm. infographics super easy and they're there mostly in English and Arabic at the okay, same time. Okay. Uh, and uh, they can, if they think they can't uh, file a case, do you know that anyone can file a case using the website of this uh, uh, human resource and social development without even, even having a lawyer? Really? Yeah, anyone can? Anyone can do this. Anyone. And I encourage everyone to go and check if you're having a valid app share. You can totally create an account on social uh, human resource social development and file your case and you just have to be really careful when you mention or with the compensation you want because it should be clearly mentioned and at one point it should be according to your uh, contract mm -hmm. and you have to support your claim with uh, with, uh, with evidence of mm. course but you'll get it yeah because I think that goes to a conversation that we had the other day just around how I sort of knew a, a guy here who actually initially reached out to me via these videos and he moved over and what something happened at work which um, wasn't his fault um, and there was no evidence that it was he was he was at fault and so what happened to him is he was brought into a room by the owner and basically said we're issuing your final exit um, i.e. you're leaving the country for good and we are not going to pay you your end of service, we're not going to pay you your, your leftover holiday days and we are not going to sort of pay you out your contract. If you do not accept this, then we will call the police, you'll get arrested and you'll go to prison and you'll pay fines. So this was the lawyer that I passed him on mm -hmm. to and mm -hmm. that is going great for mm -hmm. him um, because obviously he was sort of... Um, 
victimized in a way um, or thrown under the bus, however you want to put it. But with that story, I want to sort of, you know, ask you, what are the things that expats are entitled to at the mm -hmm. end of their contract? Mm -hmm. What should they be looking for? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, personally speaking, when I finished my contract, you know, it was quite a nice, <laughs> quite a nice bump in mm -hmm. terms of like the, the thank you um, sort of end of service, for example. Mm -hmm. So what are the things that people should look for when it comes to ending their contract? Okay, so when it comes to end of contracts, allow me just to a step a little bit back and Please? check the termination of that contract, okay? So before we we check what are the benefits that we're going to, to, uh, to have, we need to check how are we going out of that contract? Mm. Because there is the non-renewal, there's the resignation, there's the termination, and according to each one of them, maybe the, the benefits will be different. Of course. All right. So I encourage everyone not to resign to, mm. to start with, unless they, they work for more than 10 years. This is where it does not really matter. I encourage everyone not to renew. All right. So not, not, not renewal means that I'm waiting until the uh, uh, contract expires because as expats, our contracts are only, you know, limited. They're not indefinite. Yeah. So yeah, it yeah. starts in a certain date and it finishes in a certain date. OK, yes. so let's say 31st of December. OK, 2022. You need to wait until that date and consider the um, notice period. Yes. You need to comply with the notice. Uh, usually it's 60. Sometimes it's 30, sometimes not mentioned, so you don't have anything, <laughs> yes. all right? So you have to, uh, uh, to comply with this and not to renew the contract, to send them a letter that is sent to the number or the number on WhatsApp because it is a, 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 an evidence or the email mentioned in the contract itself saying that, hey, uh, thank you, I don't want to re renew my contract. This is how you end a contract in the perfect way. Okay. So wait till the end of your contract is up. Obviously, give whatever notice period. Notice period. And then sit it out, basically. Exactly. This is how you can get all your, you know, uh, the compensations. Usually, the end of service is uh, half uh, of uh, salary, like 50% uh, of your salary for the first five years. And full salary starting from the sixth year. Mm -hmm. Okay. According to the latest salary that you took as a package. Yeah. So the basic and all the, you know, benefits. Yeah, so for me, I, w I worked at the company for three years, and so I got two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, so six weeks of salary, mm -hmm. so a month and a half. month and a half, yeah. So this is what you take. Also, uh, any kind of vacation that you did not take, mm -hmm. you will get literally every single day. Yes. People think that if I'm not using the, uh, the, uh, the vacation, it means that it's lost. No, it's not. Yes, yes, yes. And you need to track this. You, you need, need to, you need this, to yeah. because mm -hmm. stuff falls through the cracks. HR people come and go. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if the company isn't set up in a way that it's got a, a solid platform to, you know, manage the human mm -hmm. resources side, then stuff can fall through as it did. Um, and I've experienced. Another thing, I think, is if you are being forced or not forced, if you are working on the religious holidays, then you are entitled those days as that well. Is, uh, that's an overtime. Yes. Usually there is a mechanism for them if you're working uh, through, for example, uh, Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha or uh, the National Day. It means that they might add this, they should add this to your uh, your off days, your vacation, or they compensate you with an overtime, which is one hour is an, uh, one hour and a half. 150% for one hour if you're working there mm. and you're okay with it, Yes. right? So um, you need to track these days, as you said, and each uh, every 30 days is a salary mm -hmm, for that. Mm -hmm. When it comes to flight ticket, it should be clearly mentioned in the contract. Some of the companies would say that if you're not uh, traveling and you're not taking the, the ticket, you're not going to be compensated. And that would be enforceable. That will be the case, okay? Uh, unless it wasn't mentioned, uh, then you can request the untaken uh, tickets, flight tickets, because you can take a flight ticket for you, mm -hmm. or it might be you and your family yes, if it yes, was yes, stipulated. Yes. Uh, so overtime, tickets, um, any kind of vacation, end of service, if there are any kind of bonuses that you did not take, mm -hmm. you are entitled to take, which should be, again, stipulated in the contract. Yes. All right. Uh, if you apparently paid for your iqama to be uh, renewed, there's something you, that you can request. Because renewing your iqama is, on, is, uh, is something that the company should pay. Mm. But for your dependents, your family, if a wife or daughter or maid, they are, you are paying for them for their monthly payment. Mm. There's something that you need to pay. Yes, yes, All yes. Right? So this is uh, as well. 
Uh, medical insurance, if you are paying for your own medical insurance, there's something that you can totally request. Okay. Okay. The company should uh, should pay cover you. Cover you for medical. They, they should cover you. And these are things that you can file a case against your company, your uh, sponsor, if they're not paying you. Mm. So this is something that you can totally request. This is what I can uh, recall for the moment. I think I covered them all. And, and I think it's it's a case of, you know, always have papers or documents or emails or WhatsApps mm -hmm. because, you know, if you've got a paper trail, then it's much easier to prove your case should, should there be an it issue. It is easier. And one more thing, if you're doing an overtime, okay, so overtime apparently will be the, the punch in, is the punch out is the thing that you're... And usually the IT people would have track of that. And mm. some modern companies are having uh, an, a kind of, you know, a system for punching in and out. So you just uh, register in your phone yes. and you can get a kind of an approval for this. If you're having an overtime mm -hmm. by having this kind of report, you can request any overtime yes, um, okay. more than uh, f uh, 48 hours per week. This is the maximum hours that we can work according to labor law. More than that would be uh, overtime. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. God, I wish I had this information when I first came. <laughs> right. Uh, but I mean, even then, like, it's been three years, obviously, Corona as well, but things have changed pretty significantly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I remember sort of coming over and people saying, like, there's no way your your company will transfer you, mm -hmm. will transfer your e-karma, like they send you home. So if you wanted to transfer, you would have to go home, reapply for another e-karma and then come back. So whereas now, it's literally just it's, it's, a click, as you said, exactly. a click of a button. A click of a button, that's, that's how you are transferred. As long as uh, your contracts, uh, your contract uh, allow you and there's the non-compete. Mm -hmm. So it is ultimately this way, but there are some kind of exceptions. Yes. That's why we really, really need to read our contract employment before yes. we accept. Yeah, it's not a, uh, it's not an Apple update. Exactly. Really exactly. Yeah. It's it. not like terms and conditions to just download an application. And that's the you thing, like you, you will get to the point where you're finishing your contract and you're like, okay, shit, I really need to read this. Um, why why did i sign this yeah and yeah, exactly. so you need you need to have that exactly, visibility exactly. and this is something i like to do in uh, during my program all rise i help people to avoid hiring lawyers yes, yes right yes. so i'm saving them money by uh, are you, are you getting a kickback well no, no <laughs> not yet from my colleagues stopped calling me but i mean <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it for the further good yeah yeah, yeah right sure. so yeah everyone should read and I, I keep on telling everyone laws are made for everyone to read mm. it's just that lawyers are using them yeah so uh and i'm not asking one to read everything I'm just asking them to try to read the relevant laws to what they're doing yes so yes, if yes. you're uh, initiating a company okay if you're part of a company you have to read the relevant laws mm -hmm. uh pertaining it right yeah so you just you can't go blindly you have this is your know-how well yes yeah, it's, it's your it's your you know your tool or your weapon in a way exactly. you're, you're coming to a country where you don't necessarily know how things work so you're you feel like you're reliant on your your company but ultimately your company mm -hmm. could be pulling the wool over your eyes or mm -hmm. kind of deceiving you or whatever it might be you know most of the time not the case but for you having understanding of this, you you have a position of of power to to sort of argue from. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say this isn't the, as the labor law, or ask a question, or ask for rationale, or contact Iba, whatever. <laughs> like you, you, it's, it's ultimately knowledge is power, mm -hmm. right? And absolutely. you 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 kind of can fight your own corner mm -hmm. if needs be. Absolutely, absolutely, can't agree more. So, and I hope that people um, don't have to contact lawyers because at one point it means that everything is going well. Oh, for uh, sure. But if so, I mean, yeah, it's uh, just a challenge. We have to be a part of it. We have to be courageous enough to file the case. Yeah, you can, you can, you can do it if you think that there's something that you, even if it was, even if it was a letter of you know experience. I mean, it's your right. Mm -hmm. You can file a case for it. Yes, yes. And then you'll get it. Yeah. Believe it or not, you'll get it. Because the consequences are really uh, significant for the companies if not they're not providing a certificate, a yeah. letter of service, or, or uh, you know, uh, it, it is considered a letter, but it is a requirement, uh, and it's your right. So always fight for your right. Absolutely. In the famous <laughs> words of who who sang that? <laughs> fight for your right. Uh -huh. um, to party, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so one last thing is like, why do you think all this is happening? Like all this big change in the sort of the legal side? Is it to attract more talent? Is it to sort of 
get up to a, a, a global standard? Like, what, yeah, what would you yeah. say? So, so many reasons. So, uh, being uh, aligned with the global standard is one thing. And now we are reaching a place where we're having a solid code of that law for uh, almost everything, mm. rather than just relying on the sole discretion of the uh, of the judge, right? So we're having this kind of uh, modern uh, tra uh, transition into getting everything literally written, okay, and enforceable. Mm. Uh, also, we're attracting uh, amazing talents from all over the world. We need people to say that, hey, I really need to go and work in Saudi Arabia. Yes, yes. Everything is clear. Yes, so, yes. yeah, um, uh, attracting talents and not allowing anyone to abuse the system. This is very important. Mm. Not to allow anyone to use loopholes and to control what is happening there for their own benefit. Uh, so when it's uh, happening this way, uh, it's been judged objectively. Yes. So for everyone to, you know, be aligned with law and to... Be everyone... ruled in the same way. Exactly. Same same rules apply. Yeah. Yeah. And then one thing I always do is, is sort of ask my guest, what, okay. um, what, is, what would you say to someone who's thinking of moving to Saudi? So someone who's been watching this video, someone who's watched maybe some other videos or who's researching Saudi and they've got a, a sort of a job offer, mm -hmm. what, would you, what would your advice be to them? Well, uh, the first advice, of course, is to research the company itself, uh, try to check their history, try to check their website, try to contact people, to try to talk to people rather than just emails, mm. try to check if there's a or kind of organic human element. Uh, even if you had an interview, Keep on uh, following up call and check if this is uh, this is 100% valid. And once you get the visa, I highly recommend you also check with a lawyer or check uh, with the governmental kind of uh, website because they accept calls from outside of Saudi Arabia. Okay. Yeah, this is something that you can do. And, and where's that? Sorry, where, where would you? Where would someone find that? Well, uh, we can uh, put the number. Is the foreign affairs? Okay. Okay, the foreign affairs number they can accept from outside, mm -hmm. and some uh, some other websites have the have the live chat. Okay. okay the fine. human resource social development also can have the live chat. They can literally chat to them and check uh, if this is valid. Okay. They can if they don't have any knowledge about that type of visa. Okay, and they they, they can uh, last thing they can go to consulate uh, in their country the Saudi consulate, mm -hmm. to check, to show them the documents uh, because they would uh, check their real accreditation and how formal the documents are. I see, okay. okay. And um, I mean, um, uh, they, also they have to check the culture. They have to check if they're, I mean, at one point they're, uh, the nature of the living, it's, it's, it's evolved, it's changed sign uh, significantly since uh, a while. But still, some of the, you know, uh, bits of the culture might not be yeah, relevant yeah, to everyone yeah. so they need to have this kind of comprehensive study right everything that kind of holistic approach to yes. what's going to be uh, to be here but i believe now it's uh it's one of the best places to work and honestly <laughs> ending on a high <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah yeah i can't, can't uh uh, deny this. Uh, they will be the 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 more the, uh, sophisticated the company is, the better the work environment. For sure, be. the better the onboarding, yeah, the exactly. better all that kind the of stuff is. So. And I think you know that's one thing here is is we've talked quite uh, technical and you know uh, in relation to law and people's rights and what's wrong and r what is right. But ultimately, it, it is a very exciting opportunity that you have. And as as you you've heard, things are moving definitely towards you know or progressing forwards right so whether that is job motility whether that is you know transferring or whether that is you know just simply being able to contact or speak to someone who might be able to help um all of these options are there but ultimately it is exciting uh, there's a lot to enjoy here and hopefully you won't have to use half of this information because <laughs> everything is absolutely fine but being aware and and knowing what you what you don't know is the most important thing mm -hmm. i think absolutely knowledge is power and we, you just don't have to trust people blindly okay and if it's if it sounds too good to be true too, too good to be true do not, do not, yeah do not sometimes you get the literally the work contract signed and stamped 
just ask yourself, is it too good to be true? Nice. Well, Iba, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So no. I was really excited for this opportunity. What do you mean? It's our studio. This yeah, is where, right. This is where we host yeah, from. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> our comfort, uh, no, is it comfort zone? I don't know. The place I where... Think, I think yeah, it is. It is. I, it is. So. I mean, comfort, Happy but place. it's freaking freezing. <laughs> yeah, it is. it is. I was shivering totally. <laughs> no, so, um, but no, thank you so much for your time. And again, if anyone wants to reach out, please, please do Instagram directly or maybe... You want a bit of uh, Les Mills inspo? Oh yeah. <laughs> so maybe if you if you add my my sportive account, they will say, oh, this person. Oh yes, I did. I thought that was your only one. So. Yeah. So I have to. The the one I'm active in is the sportive one. Okay, fine. Uh, well, know, we can add I, your professional one. Yeah, that would be yeah. That would yeah, be good. The polo shirt. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, so many interviews here in the studio. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Awesome. Great. Nice. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate thank you it so much. And, and good luck. And you're doing amazing in this. Keep keep it up. You're giving people so much good stuff. Maybe. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, keep on growing. Keep we on will. growing. Yeah. We'll help with you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm here to help. All right. Thank you.